my name is Jamie Lee and today I'll be doing a review of the final episode of the Daryl Dixon spin-off from The Walking Dead. What a spin-off it was. It was absolutely incredible. And I just want to start by answering the question that literally all of my friends seem to ask. And that is, do they need to watch the end of The Walking Dead or the finale of The Walking Dead in order to watch these spin-offs? And with the Dead City one, I would say yes, you would need to know the conflict between Maggie and Negan. But with the Daryl Dixon one, it's like its own standalone series. Like you don't need to have watched the finale of The Walking Dead in order to understand what is happening with Daryl over in France. So I definitely recommend watching it because I thought it was absolutely incredible. I really did. I loved the acting. I loved the scenery. I loved the cinematography. The plot line was simple but interesting. I was constantly second guessing where they're going with it. What are they going to do? Is there a cure? It was really interesting. So I really enjoyed this spinoff. Um, and let's talk about the episode specifically. So the start of this episode, we get a little flashback of Daryl's grandfather and that he was in the war in France and that's where he died. So it's nice to get a little bit more backstory on Daryl and Daryl's family. Like we obviously know about his brother Merle. We know that his father was very abusive to the both of them, but to get further backstory on that, I thought it was really interesting. And I love how it ties into that emotional moment at the end there that we get. So I thought that was a really good uh, and very emotional backstory to give Daryl. It was really, really beautiful. Uh, and then we flash forward to the current day where you've got Daryl in this arena being the puppet or puppeteer. I don't know what you would call it. He's putting on a show for Genet, the soldiers, the people of France, where they've juiced up these zombies. You know, they've hit him with a little compound V, literally like shot them with this juice to make them stronger or have these different abilities like different variants of these walkers and although it was incredible to see different kinds of walkers like it was really fun to see ones that would run or ones that would literally claw someone's head off which was oh terrifying but awesome to watch ones that would attack other zombies or ones whose head just completely blew off it's so cool to see these different kinds of walkers, but at the same time, I feel really off about it because I'm kind of like, well, this Janae lady is tampering with the dead. I don't know. Something feels creepy about that to me, but in saying that, I like watching Daryl fight these guys, but yeah, I'm like, can we just like leave the dead alone maybe oh gosh anyway uh so we get daryl putting on this show and the choreography in this arena was, mm, 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 was so good daryl is you know like dodging this well firstly this one walker dodging him and stuff like that stabs him and the acid starts coming out onto the staff so obviously daryl gets a bit burnt and he's like what the heck and the zombie just pulls itself off the staff because you know that's what the dead can do when they're juiced up on compound v <laughs> I know that I'm comparing the two, The Walking Dead and uh, Gen V, so, or The Boys, which I probably shouldn't do because they're very different. Anyway, I'm going to stop using that phrase. They juiced them up. Uh, and on this juice, you know, he can just get off the staff or whatever. So Daryl tries to defeat him, stabs him and does his, you know, like WWE moves. The choreography was really, really good. Finally stabs this one walker. Janae looks at the scientist like, is this all you've got? Like, surely we've got some other variants out there. Come on, bring us the best you've got. Out comes poor Quinn. Daryl and him get chained together and they have to, at first they thought fight, but then they realized, you know what, let's work together and kill these zombies because there was about six of them, I think, two, four, six, maybe even eight. There was a lot uh, until they started killing each other off, which was kind of helpful, but there was a lot of variants of walkers and they thought, you know, let's work together and we might be able to get out of this. Again, the choreography was really, really good in these moments. I loved seeing them chained up and, you know, working together to <laughs> get zombies by the neck or rip one's head off. And it was really, really fun. Unfortunately, Quinn got bit that we later find out. Uh, and it was really awesome to see him. I, I thought he had different intentions in this. I really thought, what does he want Isa for? What is he, you know, what, what were his intentions with her? And it turns out he just genuinely did love her. You know, even in his last little moment there, he wanted to do whatever he could to help Isabel get out uh, of Janae's little bunker or whatever you call that little arena there. So uh, he got bit. Uh, and couldn't separate from Daryl and no hesitation at all. Daryl just like chops his hand off in order for the chains to break loose and they can separate. So uh, thankfully Quinn goes and uses his last breaths to take out some of Janae's soldiers. 
uh, which lets Daryl get away, obviously. And then we come to learn that Walker Quinn tries to attack Izzy. And this is where Daryl takes his the next step in his mentoring of Laurent. He trains him and tells him and encourages him and boosts him up. And he's like, you can do this. God will forgive you in order to save Izzy from uh, Walker Quinn. So he stabs his own dad in order to save Izzy. And although it was a very sad moment, I thought it was really empowering for Daryl to know that, you know, he can help this kid just as much as this kid is, I think, helping Daryl as well. So Izzy's friends, Falau and Sylvie, and I can't remember the other kid's name, but the other one, they all helped Daryl. Izzy and Sylvie and Laurent to escape until their car breaks down and then Godron and the soldiers catch up to them. So we see this little hostage moment and they say, shoot the kid. Izzy obviously doesn't want that. So she tries to protect him and one of the guards stab her. Uh, while all that commotion is going on, Godron knows that he can't kill this kid. Like there's just something, the kid's praying and it was very sweet. And he just knows he can't do that. You know, it, there's something in him that couldn't bring him to do that, which was really good. Next minute we see him just pop off all Jeanne's soldiers and I'm thinking, whoa, like what a turn, what a change in motivation. So good. Uh, and then he tells them, you know, where the nest is and how to get there safely and whatnot, which was awesome. But this was the one part that I didn't understand about this episode. And that was the fact that he knows what Janae's like. He knows what the soldiers are like. He knows what her mentality is, what her goal is, you know, experimenting on these walkers and wanting to kill the kid. Why did he go back to her? I know he had an alibi and a lie created in his head, but why go back knowing what she's like? Like just go be free, go to the nest, Pro help them protect people of the nest. Like, oh, don't go back to her. But anyway, he went back uh, and we saw the consequences of that. You know, she caught him out on his lie uh, and we don't know what's going to happen with him into season two. So that'll be a really interesting thing to, or a storyline that could get brought up in season two. So Daryl keeps his promise and they make it to the nest, which to be honest with you is not what I was expecting at all. There was no walkers. It looked really beautiful. Um, and Daryl said the same thing, you know, he's like, oh, I expected there to be like Amish people and people walking around with bonnets and churning butter, which was quite funny. Uh, and it wasn't, it was a really beautiful place for them to live. So Izzy had that emotional moment with Daryl when, you know, they, I would call it romantic, uh, where he was cleaning her wound, her stab wound and things like that. And they were talking about home and he said that, you know, he's really happy that she feels at home and at peace here, but it's not for him and he has family to get to. So they have that talk about, uh, and this is where that scene at the start ties in there. Daryl talks about having a father figure and that history just repeats itself, you know, where the men leave their family and then their family are screwed sort of thing. And that seems to be a pattern that's happened throughout Daryl's life. And it's not going to change now, premeditating what's going to happen with him with Laurent. Like Izzy says that Laurent sees Daryl as sort of like a father figure. He was praying for Daryl compared to his own father in that arena. So uh, yeah, he definitely sees Daryl as a father figure and Daryl's just going to up and leave him. So yeah, that was a really emotional moment there, you know, thinking Daryl could have a family, he could have happiness, but at the same time I'm torn because I'm like, go back to Carol, we love Carol. <laughs> but anyway, and we love our original group, but you know, you've come to love this group. And what I really love about this group is that we're going to see them through into season two, which is something that Dead City didn't do. They got us attached to these characters and then they killed everybody off. So it was literally just Maggie and Negan and what, two others, or obviously her son too, shouldn't forget about him, but her poor Herschel, sorry. But you know what I mean? Like they killed off this new group that we could have grown to love to take us through into season two. This show did a really good job of that. So we've still got some of them core characters that we've seen that can take us through into season two to make that storyline a little bit more relatable because we know these characters a little bit more now. We see Daryl take the Rubik's Cube to Laurent's bed, doesn't wish him a goodbye, very sad. And you think, oh, this poor kid's gonna wake up so sad. You know, he's got to his resting place, his nest. He's got Izzy, he's lost his dad, and now he's gonna lose Daryl. So I was like, oh, the poor kid. Uh, anyway, we see Daryl go across this gorgeous, oh my gosh, this was so stunning, all across those landscapes, just walking and walking for probably two days, I think they said it was in the show, to get to this boat, which was going to take him home or halfway there at least. Those shots were absolutely beautiful. You've got that gorgeous, like, somber nun music. I don't know, that's not a very good descriptive term, sorry about that, but you know what I mean? Like, the music is really on point for what is happening in the scene. It look, just looks so beautiful, but also so lonely. 
um, at the same time. So yeah, it was very beautiful. We see Daryl go through this grave site and to tie everything in, I love when shows do this. Like it really does make my heart feel so happy to see Daryl go looking for his grandfather, to see Daryl find his grandfather's grave, to find that cross there was beautiful. He shed a little tear and it was a fulfilling moment that I didn't know I needed Daryl to have, but seeing him have it, oh, my heart felt so happy. You know, like he had a little piece of closure going to France was worth it to him. He might not have found Rick. He might not have found, you know, whatever it was that he was out there looking for, but he did find peace in finding his grandfather. So, and who knows, history might not be repeating itself on the cliffhanger that we left off because obviously we see the boat coming towards Daryl and he's like, hey, I'm here. Great. Daryl's going home. Yay. My heart's all happy. And then a whole bunch of walkers just suddenly appear. And I mean a whole bunch. Like, where were they two seconds ago? Sorry. But yeah, come on. Uh, he starts taking him out and slowly backs away. And I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, he's going to miss the boat. They're not going to, like, come because there's lots of walkers. Um, but no, everything's good. Daryl goes down to the beach. And then we get that beautiful shot. We turn around and Lamrod's going, Daryl, Daryl, in that gorgeous accent. And Daryl's torn between, do I go back and be with the kid or do I go home in this boat that's waiting for me then? Obviously, with the season two spoilers, we know a little bit about what's going to happen. But, oh, man, it was great. I honestly thought that was a beautiful end and a perfect series, if I'm being honest with you. It just was so, it was tied up nicely. Sometimes six doesn't feel like it's enough. But to me, with this series, it just felt so perfect. Everything started and finished perfectly and the journey for Daryl was just really, really beautiful. I really enjoyed this series. Um, let me know in the comment section what you thought about it. I lost my mind at the season two premiere, The Book of Carol. Oh my God, my queen, my queen is back. And I just can't wait to see where they take it. I mean, I love Daryl and Carol together as friends. I love Daryl and Carol together romantically. I love Daryl, I love Carol the end so i'm really curious to see what's going to happen with izzy and where they take that relationship you know is daryl going to go on this romantic relationship with her what's going to happen how are they going to tangle the two together are they going to make it back for the reunion with rick i can't wait to find out in season two but oh just seeing carol riding off on daryl's bike i was screaming i was so excited i can't wait i loved this series and i can't wait for season two of it so yeah let me know in the comments what you thought about it if you haven't watched it yet go and watch it because you do not need to watch the walking dead in order to understand what's happening and it is incredible you can come back and thank me later okay if you're not already make sure you subscribe to my channel and then also in the main page there head on over to my gaming channel gaming in the front row uh and give me a subscribe over there as well. I need all the subscribers I can on that account. And if you're not already, make sure that you head on over to my socials and give me a flow over there as well so that I can interact with you there as well. Alrighty, that's it for now. Have a great day. Bye.